All right, I hope everyone is feeling good as gold tonight. We are here downtown LA at the row doing a live shenanigans podcast with my girls, Christina Kelly, Lala Kent. The real star of the show is little Ocean right here. <laughs> But seriously, thank you guys all for driving in this weather. I really appreciate you all being here, and I hope you enjoy the shenanigans we're about to get into. I just want to say I am so proud to be among two boss mamas who have started their own brands from the ground up and built these businesses that you all have shopped. And I want to talk to them about these businesses. I want to know all of everything from the first product to where we're at now and I figure we could just get right into it so I want to start with Christina okay so your brand is called HeartSpring mm -hmm. where did the name come from my dad my dad's Aww. like super hippie um he had a wellness company growing up called HeartSpring and then he sort of had stopped that for a little while. And then when I was thinking of names for my brand, that kind of came about. I was like, can I use the name? And he's like, yeah, it's all, it's all good. You can have it. I love that. Yeah. So yeah. how long have you had HeartSpring now? Since 2016. Wow. Yeah, that was when I launched the first product. 2016. Awesome. So I was yeah. getting divorced and you were starting a company. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so what, I want to know, what was the first product you had, like how did this all come about? How did you know that you wanted to do, because you've got face mist, body scrubs, you have the lip balms, and soap. Yeah. Which it's, was the first one? It started with the lip balm. I was so over every lip balm I was buying. Birds, yeah. bees, everything was drying my lips out. And I was like, I could probably make, I could make something better. And I, I had a little notebook. I was like taking notes and adding things and pouring waxes, melting things down. I was like a little chemist in my kitchen. And I just made my own dream lip balm. And then I started like having my friends test it and be like, what do you think of this? Take this home. And then it was like the one, there was one batch that was just like the aha. Yeah. Like, I think this is it. And I started formulating the lip balms and my friends were obsessed with it. And I was like, you guys, like this was pretty good. And then it started, the, I started the company, started branding it. So it started off with like the lip balms and then it slowly turned into the rest of the products. Love it. Yeah. Her lip balms really are the best. And if you have not <laughs> tried her body scrub, if you did not purchase it today, like you're really fucking up. <laughs> I refuse <laughs> to add any sort of body scrub to give them Lala because I'm like, I know I won't use it because I prefer hers. Like, I love, that. I love you. I know. You when, killed it. Yeah. But that's the thing you. too that I love is when, you know, not just women supporting women, but when your friends' brands kind of all like mesh together and it's like, well, I'm not going to do this because yours is already great. And then yeah. you just support each other yeah. and they all go so well together. You know, we have Give Them Lala Beauty, we've got Viva Verano Lashes, and then we have all of yours. That's with why this, this makes so much sense. When yeah. people have asked us, like, why are the three of you out of everyone with the show, like, why are you guys doing this? And it's like, well, first off, Shopify. Second <laughs> yeah. off, we it makes sense. Like all of our brands just they they go together. Like, yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. Now, give them Lala has uh, like I feel like you're our Kim K Kylie of the bunch because you started with <laughs> Some lip glosses. Wait. I know this is so for for those of you who don't know, Lala needs her ego fueled constantly. So But if you guys don't do it, I'll do it to myself. So we're all good here. No, but seriously, you started out with a few lip glosses and now you have so many eyeshadow palettes, you have a whole skincare line, you have robes, you have merch, you have baby, you have this entire brand that you have built yourself, which I am so proud of you for doing literally on your own without the help of anyone else's money or anything else. So, Thank you, Sheesh. Yes. 
But I want to go back to the process of the first product you created. You had your lip glosses. I had lip glosses. I started with six. I'm very conservative when it comes to my money. I know everyone thinks that I'm like bougie. I'll spend everyone else's money, but I'm funny about mine. <laughs> <laughs> and so I just wanted to see if it would hit. Let's start with six lip glosses and see what happens. You guys thankfully took to it. And from there, it was like, let's try an eyeshadow palette. That hit. Then it was like highlighters. And then we just started slowly adding things that I use every single day. And I'm not putting it out there if I'm not wearing it. If I have it a part of Give Them Lala, like I'm always rocking it on my eyes, my lips. I'm not great at contour, so I say I just am creating bone structure because contouring makes me sound like I know what the fuck I'm doing, and I don't. Which is what Give Them Lala is about. I just wanted a line that was approachable and not intimidating for people. Yeah. So where did you get the name Give Them Lala? Was it just something you said one night and then you're like, oh, boom, this is what needs to be my brand? I had walked off the show season five and I saw that people were upset about it and my ego got very huge. <laughs> And I switched my Twitter name to give them Lala, like give the people what they want. And from there, like I would go into interviews and whoever was interviewing me would say, give them Lala. I'm like, wait, this is sticking. And so it just made sense to like kind of roll with it. And here we are. Yeah. Here we are. <laughs> here we are. <laughs> what is each of your favorite items in your lines? I mean, they're all my babies, aren't they? Um, oh. Which out of like each product? Because you have like, is there one face mist that you like more, or a lip balm flavor that's just like scent? That's no, your favorite? I can go ahead and I'll go ahead and give you a. I have probably, truly, what it's like on in every in every room of the house in the car is the tinted lip balm. Yeah, I always say because when I'm not wearing any makeup, and I'm just feeling, you know. And you just, you get that out and you just get a nice little, brings life back into mm -hmm. me and my lips, I feel like. Yeah, I'd say the tinted lip balm. That's the thing. You can just do like tinted moisturizer, tinted lip balm. If you have some eyelash extensions and microblading, it's like your full face. You don't need anything <laughs> yeah. else. But no, I you're love good. a tinted lip balm. Yeah. 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 What about you, Law? I think you're messing up if you don't get my lip quencher. Any of them. I have three. Um, and the bathrobe, because... I just like yummy lips and to be cozy. So those are my two favorites. I might, yeah. I might be in the hospital in the bathrobe. That's in my, I have that packed in my hospital bag. That's my... such a good, I'm obsessed with bathrobes. And the one I have, a part of Give Them Lala, has a hood. And it's apartment living up in these streets, right? I got to take the dogs <laughs> out. So to be able to like throw that on and go incognito, I'm killing it. And then if I see a hot neighbor and I'm like, put oh. the, <laughs> Put the lip quencher on, fresh out of bed, freshly right? fucked hair. Like, let's make out. Yeah. <laughs> so obviously Christina is ready to pop any second. Could be tonight. We don't know. But I want to know, because you just mentioned you have the robe in your hospital bag. Yep. Are there any other, for anyone out there who is listening right now, not necessarily just in this room, but for all of the listeners out there, what are some of the other must-haves that are in your hospital bag? Ooh, I did a lot of research, a lot of TikTok. My TikTok is like a full mom. You're such a Virgo. Now. I know. I did a lot of research on my hospital bag <laughs> for when I go into birth a human. Yeah. Um, okay. I have an extra long phone charger, iPad, robe, slippers, um, like a pajama set that can open up, like, you know, button yep. down. Mm -hmm. What else? Um... A cozy blanket, mm -hmm. like a throw blanket. Oh, what else? What else? Nipple cream. <laughs> That's, that is a must have. Let me say for all of my expecting moms out there, the nipple cream, if you start that from the beginning, like literally from the first latch and you keep that on, mine never cracked once. I started doing it before. 
Like, I remember during, because I was pregnant during COVID, just, like, lathering my nipples and just, like, squeezing the shit out of them. <laughs> you know, because obviously I wasn't sleeping you with would. my ex. I mean, we all know what he looks like, so that wasn't happening. So I was just, like, <laughs> foreplaying with myself. Just, like, prepping for a baby to just... <laughs> Do you know how many times I've seen a naked photo of Lala, like fully naked pregnant she's like do you want to yeah. see what color my nipples turn to and i'm like oh. i liked the color of my yeah. nipples yeah and fun fact my cookie got cuter while i was pregnant S- said no one ever except you so good she, for you know. <laughs> she talks about it a lot i know like. i know i just recently watched a video of ocean coming out of the cookie and i was like oh wow my experience was very different i was just like <laughs> And on the chest, like very different. I'll show you guys later. <laughs> she will, no, but she actually will if you ask her. No, no, she loves to show people. <laughs> All right, so Lala, the hoodie you're wearing. I don't know if I actually know the answer to this, but whose idea was it to turn Rand into brand new in a tattoo and then obviously on your merch? It was my idea. I remember being in Puerto Rico and we had um, a tattoo artist come to tattoo myself, MGK, and Megan Fox. And she says that so casually. I know, right? We were just no big deal. And they asked me, What are you going to do if it doesn't work out? And I'm looking at her, like, What are you going to do? Because you literally have El Pistolero tattooed on your chest. Like, we're both pretty (laughs) fucked. And I told her I'm, I would just change it into brand new. So, like, I was thinking ahead. Like, this, this relationship was always doomed, right? I was always thinking of, like, the escape plan. Um, so I just executed it on October 20th. Yeah. Yeah. And then decided to put on sweatshirts and sell them to everyone, and they're so dope. And then, naturally, I wanted to make money off of yeah. my heartbreak. break. <laughs> As you should. <laughs> Okay, so um, a couple more questions about the brands, and then I know you guys probably want some Vanderpump tea, so we're going to get into some of that. And then I also, I have some questions I got on Instagram. I want to open it up to questions from all of you guys. But I want to go back to Christina, because I've known you for so long now. You've been doing this since 2016, you said. So is this your main job? Like, this is your baby? Yeah. That's so amazing that that's yep. all you have to do is just have your own brand and yep. make a living. It took me a long time to leave Sir. I was doing both. Yeah. And then eventually I, I parted ways with Sir, and then just purely Heartspring has been like my, yeah, everything poured my heart and soul into it i love that yeah what advice would you both have for entrepreneurs who just have a dream want to execute it like what is one piece of advice that you would give to someone well i would definitely say don't just quit your job right away (laughs) don't quit your day job no like (laughs) i i remember i had heartspring for a while and i was still working at sir and heartspring was doing well and I still was like I I can't just I have to make sure I have a certain amount put away it's a passion but I I I need to make sure I have like stability Mm -hmm. so I would yeah I mean that would be maybe the first piece of advice but then I think branding branding for me is a huge thing so I would say take something that works but then go crazy with the branding yeah I like that advice don't quit your day job don't steal it I'm not going to steal it. <laughs> I'm not going to steal She's like, it. what she said. <laughs> um, letting your business fuel your business. I watch people often like try to shove money into their business from their own personal account to try and get it to do something. And I think if it's not hitting, go back to the drawing board and figure out what it is that you can change up before you just start taking your personal money and putting it into the business. That would be my biggest piece of advice. There's one thing that you had said to me when we were talking about just certain things. I know we can get discouraged, you know, if we have an item or whatever and it just doesn't hit. And you said exactly that. And I was like, oh, okay, that made me feel better because I feel like 
we try a lot of different things until we figure out what works and just not getting discouraged. And it's like, okay, that didn't work, so how can I do it better? Right. I mean, I also think that we take things really personally and I never feel defeated. Like if something's not working, I don't take it personally at all. I shake it off and figure out what about it didn't work. But like we talked about before, you know, the Kardashians had some hair care line. They had like nail polish, I think. Like a lot of stuff. I know Mark Wahlberg has done a million and one businesses. Not everything hits, but you will find the one thing that's just like the golden ticket. Yeah. What, uh, well, I know that obviously because these are both of your brands, so I know you're both very involved in the creative process, but what is something that you've learned in either developing formulas or colors or scents or things that you didn't really know going into it? Oh, um, gosh, that's tough because it's so much trial and error. I've had so many products where I've tested, like I've said, I've had a little notebook and formula and adding this and taking away this. The tinted lip balm was probably the hardest product that I had, that took the longest. That was the hardest thing to nail the color mm. because all of my stuff's all natural. So I wanted to have a natural mineral and I was trying, remember I, my, first, my first go at the tinted lip balm, I was trying to do like beetroot powder Oh, that was rough. <laughs> that was not good. That that took me a long time to figure out like what the right and the right amount. I didn't want it to be, you know, too red but not red red enough and it was a lot of trial and error. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm no chemist. I think finding someone who I can tell you, like, I don't like the texture of this. I don't like the color. I don't like the way this wears after a certain period of time. So finding someone who is the pro, like for me, I'm okay with saying I don't know everything. So bringing someone on who's going to be able to create exactly what I'm telling them I need created was the biggest thing. I mean, I'll talk to them about shades and they're like, yeah, that's 7.2 FB. And I'm like, great, <laughs> get her done. <laughs> right. What is next for both of your brands? Are you expanding into different products, different scents, different colors, more merch? What's next for Give Them Lala and Heartspring? I'm going to take over the world, obviously. <laughs> you guys don't know it yet, but it'll soon be shoved down your throats. Are you excited? I hope you swallow. <laughs> are there children here tonight or are we... Are Just we fine. Don't worry about okay. it. <laughs> Just my unborn child. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> He's there was a kid here last no, night. No, he's used to it by now. Though. I we mean, won't. yeah, he had a whole season of hearing all he's of this. So used to it. I'm sorry. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Aunt Lala, he's going to learn very soon. <laughs> um, I actually just released a new soap that's only being sold here right now. Is that the eucalyptus it's one? The eucalyptus Ooh. soap. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so. I want to keep adding products. That's my problem is that I'm like, oh, I have too many ideas. Um, but I would, I mean, I'd love to start getting HeartSpring in more stores, mm -hmm. like more storefronts. I think the product does really well in person because you can smell it. You can look at the texture. You know, it, it does so much online, but then in person, I feel like you really get the experience. So yeah. I would love to start getting it in more stores. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. All right, so um, as Andy Cohen says, I kind of want to switch gears here. <laughs> I want to get into some show stuff, but I thought we could play a fun little game with Lala to start. Yay! And it's called Three Nice Things. So <laughs> I'm going to need you to say three nice things about three different cast members. However... I get to pick the cast members. Great. I can't wait for this game. <laughs> I'll, I'll, let's let's do, we're going to go with three for Raquel, but only one can be a physical attribute. And then I'll go easy on you, just one for each Tom. I like that because okay. they're basically the same person. <laughs> um, you put them together and guess what you have? Interesting. <laughs> let's start the game now. After okay. That. Um, Raquel. Come on. 
I'm thinking. I said one can be physical. Okay, she's pretty. She graduated college. I think that's cool. I, can I phone a friend? Sure. <laughs> Help me out, someone. She helped you get a product. She helped me yes. create the Bambi-eyed bitch palette. That was good. Yes. That was good. Thank you. There you mm -hmm. go. <laughs> um, Tom Sandoval. I love his passion. And Tom Schwartz. He is sweet. Okay. Right? Yeah. It's kind of anticlimactic. I felt like this was going to be a more fun game. And you might, I was even going to say, well, I'll say three nice things about if Katie you if you say three nice things about Raquel. But you were kind of struggling there. Well, it's hard. No, it's not. It's Raquel. There's so many nice things. Oh, my She's a God. Nice I'm person. so done with you. I'm so <laughs> done with you. <laughs> All right. Let's move on to James. There were some questions that came in about James. Okay. But I first want to know. So we all saw, I'm sure, the episode last week where Lala admitted that not once, but twice, she slept with James. Why bring it up now? Why tell Raquel at the dinner? Um, well, I knew that I needed to tell her because I had already told you, which in the episode, you act shocked by it. and you I didn't know it was knew. when they were already together. What? Lala. Are you kidding? I did not know it yes, was when did. they were already together. I knew. She knew we talked about it in Atlanta, Georgia. I know, but it wasn't that they were already together. I knew that you slept with him twice, but I did not know it was after him and Raquel were together. Okay. So well, that part we'll I was save shocked. Save this for the reunion. That part I was shocked. All right. But also in that conversation, I don't know about what you didn't see, I, I don't did know say, about all that. I did tell her in that conversation. I said, no, I knew it was twice, but I didn't know it was when they were already together. Okay. I'm pretty sure you did, but that's okay. I'm then not... I forgot. Okay. Because we'll I was shocked that. in that moment. People on Bravo love to pretend amnesia, but it's all good. We're all good. <laughs> I've seen this a million times, read this book. I have it remembered. Um, I just, I, I felt like, and there was a lot that you didn't see on the show. Like Raquel and I were really connecting. We connected at Hotel Ziggy. We had started just communicating and I felt like we were in a really, really great place. And I just felt like, there were so many skeletons in my closet that I felt were finally being cleared out and there was just this one thing that I needed to tell her. I just w couldn't with a clear conscience and it was like, her relationship's over, my relationship's over. It would have been easier for me to not tell her. Like yeah. I told her because I just couldn't keep it in. It, I felt yucky. Um, but it was weird because she, in that scene, like, looks at me and then starts talking about something else. And I was like, I'm going to need you to come back to what I just told you. Like, we got to work through this. And the way it looks on screen is that she's, like, shaking my head. <laughs> you know? But, like, I felt like we were fine after that dinner. Like, she did not make a big deal about it. And then I'm watching every scene has to do with that. This cast loves to talk about, like, six years ago. I'm like, bro, I've lived a billion lifetimes since then. Like, can we please shake it off? Well, you know people do like to bring up the past on this show. They like yes. to be like, she did this, she did that, she did this. And it's yes, like, yes, just I live in the now. boyfriend when you were together. Sorry, that's why I'm sober. Can we move along? It's like, all good. You're not even together anymore. And by the way, why are you tripping so hard? If we all remember... One of the reunions, they were like, we really started our relationship when we moved in together. So did I really, did he really cheat on her? Nah. She co-signed on the fact that they got together for real once he gave her two drawers in his apartment. Two drawers. And now suddenly she wants to talk about like, he did cheat. I'm like, which way are we going here? Fun number one, fun number two, fun number three. Right. When they did that flashback. <laughs> He was having a lot of fun. Yeah. Well, you mentioned being sober now. I want to congratulate you. We're on four years and how many months? Four. Hell yeah. Four, Congratulations. Four years, four months. <laughs> Thank you. No, that's huge. Thank you. So 
what um, there was one question that came in that I thought was interesting relating to your sobriety. And for people out there, I think this would be something good for them to hear. So candy.bar.nails wants to know, how do you cope with anxiety and panic attacks being sober? I feel like those don't really happen as much anymore because I am sober. That's amazing. You yeah. know, mm -hmm. I was really struggling with depression and anxiety when I was drinking and I'm not saying go off, get sober and go off your medication. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying for me personally, I was able to stop my medication once I stopped drinking because I just noticed that my life was now manageable and I had the tools to get through those moments. Mm -hmm. Well, congratulations again, seriously, like so proud of you for so many things, but I know that is just huge. So thank you. Very happy for Thank you. Thank you, Shishu. Yeah. Yes, let's give her a round of applause. That deserves it. My mouth still acts drunk. <laughs> I made that joke last night. Sorry. It was funny. I got a good response. So I'm going to use it again. <laughs> you tested your material and everyone last night. Always. Like, yeah. <laughs> All right. Speaking of using your mouth, have you been using it a lot lately dating? <laughs> Actually, I decided that until I'm, which may make it hard to find a boyfriend if I'm not blowing him. I feel like that kind of secures the dude. But like, unless we're like exclusive, I'm not putting my mouth on your dick. I'm just not. All right. You can enter the V, just not <laughs> my mouth. It just seems a little, <laughs> it seems a little more intimate to me. Yeah. No, it is. Right? For sure. Definitely is. It is. What would you say is your biggest ick now that you're back in the dating world? What's one thing that a guy could do that you're just like, I'm never calling you back again? Oh, that's like a really good question. I haven't even thought about that. Oh my gosh, I don't even know. I, th I think the, the hygiene is like a big one. Like, okay. But I mean, homeboy was like such so not my type like even now people can ask me like then why did you say like i don't know guys i don't know i can't tell you why you can all say the money to be honest like there wasn't much of it all right <laughs> i would like beg him to replace the sewer line all right like it wasn't <laughs> what you saw on instagram so i don't know why i stayed i think he j i sunk into like him being my best friend so now when i'm looking for a partner it's like you better come the way I want you physically. And like, if you're cool and my best friend, that's the cherry on top. I know that that sounds so bad and maybe it'll change, but it used to be like, oh, his heart. And if he's a good person and then if he's good looking, cherry on top, nah, we're switching it. <laughs> well, I do think, you know, thankfully you did stay for as long as you did because you have a beautiful baby girl now. So if there is any reason that you stayed as long as you did, maybe yeah. you didn't know the reason at the time, but it's because that baby was supposed to come into this world. Yeah, like I've said, that's the only, she's the only reason I don't sit here and like spiral and go insane is I'm like this, it was just, she was meant to be here. So how it happened is how it happened. And that's, she's exactly the reason. Yeah. Christina, how long have you and Max been together now? 13 years. Oh my gosh. That's amazing. Yeah. What would you say is the key to a successful long-term relationship? Communication is like a huge one. Um, and then we also have like a nice balance of like, he has his friends, I have my friends. Not that we, I'm friends with his, you know, we're all friends, mm -hmm. but he has his outlets, I have my outlets. Like we're not the kind of couple that's like, if you're inviting me, he's coming no matter what. It's like, no, 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 I have my girl time, I have my things and he has his. So there's a nice like separation there. Like I've traveled the world with some of my best friends without him. And then I feel like that just fuels the relationship where it's like it keeps things exciting and fun and missing him. Like yes. that's a big thing for me is like going away for a week or two and doing something on my own. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, I miss you. So 13 years, you gotta keep, you gotta like, keep that going totally so I still get excited sometimes when like he texts me because you know that. it's like we keep that going oh yeah and now you've got a beautiful baby <laughs> doing just a couple of weeks can I ask you a question uh, yeah do you guys send each other nudies <laughs> 
He doesn't send me nudes. Do you send him nudes? Yeah, I still every now and then. Okay, I'm just trying to take note. Like, how do you get a man do you to know, stay for 13 I years? Like, <laughs> no, I mean, they're like tasteful nudes. What does that mean? Tasteful. Not like legs spread yeah. open. Yeah, well, I'm not obviously. like taking the camera. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like they're they're tasteful. Okay, I like yeah. that. They're classy. Yeah. <laughs> but I do it when he's at like his DJ gigs sometimes. Oh, like, that's like a fun surprise. So, yeah. so it's like in the back of my mind, I just think like, oh, it, just in case, like, I don't know, he's a DJ. So it's like, I'm just going to send him a The record little... like scratches. He's like, nipple, <laughs> nipple. <laughs> Short circuits while he's DJing. <laughs> Sticking on the dating topic, Miss underscore Kylie 77 wants to know, Lala, what are some signs or red flags to look for when you go on a date with someone who could potentially be a narcissist? Oh, that is like, I feel like a first date is really, really hard to tell if they're a narcissist. I would say like the love bombing is the biggest thing. Like, if he's blowing your phone up and he's complimenting you over and over again, it's like, this is a red flag. This is not someone who's, like, in love with you. This is someone who's, like, really trying to take all your independence and leave you with nothing. So now that sounds like James and Allie, because you had said to Allie that he's love-bombing her the same way he love-bombed Raquel. Mm -hmm. Do you think James Kennedy is a narcissist? We talk about that this season. And I tell him that I, he has some traits. And keep in mind, I'm obviously, I know you're not shocked. I am not a doctor. I, it's, Wait, it's, what? I know. I know you're all shocked. <laughs> it's well above my pay grade to, like, diagnose someone with this. But I can only speak from my own experience. And to see someone, like, literally planning a life with someone and then it basically didn't exist and you're with someone new, it... It gets, it gets scary. And I love James. I just, I don't know that I would want to be in a relationship with him. But I feel like with Allie, that's the other thing that's hard is you wake up one day and you realize like, wow, I don't even recognize myself. You could be the smartest, most powerful human on the planet and a narcissist will like break you to your very core. Mm -hmm. So as long as I can just like make women... I mean, I guess men are affected by it too, but I'm just a girl's girl right now. That's like my safe space. So if I can just talk to women about it, just say, you know, keep your guard up. These are the things to look for. Then, then I'll be happy because I don't ever want anyone to be in the situation that I was in. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Not saying that my relationship was all bad. There were happy moments. I just don't remember any of them. <laughs> Understandable. Brittany Little wants to know if it bugs you that James has started drinking again. I don't think it... Like, how did you feel when you found out? I mean, obviously, it makes me sad because I don't know of any person who's like, my life became fucking awesome when I started getting wasted again. You know, it just... You don't hear that. I think everyone could benefit from, like, not drinking, especially people like James and myself. But again, like his journey is not mine. So if he wants to, the only thing I can do is offer him support if he needs it. Like if you decide to give it up again, I'm here. But I just think if you start affecting people in a negative way when you're drinking, like you got to take a beat and look into it. Mm -hmm. Not saying that you won't affect people negatively when you stop drinking, because I'm sure I've done that too. But. <laughs> Last question about James that came in from Haley underscore originality wants to know if he was single, would you give him a chance? James? Yeah. No. <laughs> no, no, no. Because at your live podcast in Atlanta, you said you were going to break up him and Allie this summer. I know. Can I tell you, there are times where I literally think I'm like Jerry Seinfeld. I'm like, I'm a comedian. Like Vanderpump Rules, what is that? Like I'm like I just want to make people laugh and like say things that are super shocking. Did I mean that? Absolutely not. I would never try to break anyone up. That's not. It was just to make people go, "Holy shit!" Yeah, and they did. Yeah, and they laughed. <laughs> 
Do you have both of you? I know we are just seeing Christina enter the show on episode four, which you guys haven't seen yet. But from what you remember filming this season, do either of you have any regrets? And for Lala, since a few episodes have aired already, do you have any regrets thus far? No, I actually don't have any. I, no, I don't. I feel okay. like I had a pretty solid season. Yeah. But we'll see. You guys, you guys will be tuned. the judge, I'm sure. I'm sure I'll see some of you popping in on Bravo blogs, letting me know otherwise. <laughs> Is there anything, Christina, that you're like, I wish I would have done that differently coming back? Because you weren't on the show for, God, what, six years? And now, boom, you're back. And starting episode four, like, you're back for the rest of the season. Um, it's, well, it's like riding a bike. Mm -hmm. I mean, I filmed the first few seasons and then left. And then coming back felt like normal, right? Like, it just felt normal. No, I don't think I have any regrets. Um, no. Good. Yeah. I feel like this was, like, a good season for you to, like, dip your toe in. Yeah. Right? This is a great season. This Next insane. season, if you come back, then they're like, she's fair game, y'all. <laughs> Go in. <laughs> we know she has a new baby, but it'll make for great TV. But none of us knew. So all season, Christina was pregnant, and none of us knew. So now when you guys are watching the rest of the season, just watch when she orders a sparkling water or turns down the raw fish, because now I'm watching it with, like, a different eye. Because I, none of us, we had no idea. Yeah. Yeah, I kept it from everyone. I yeah. didn't announce, I didn't tell, I didn't tell you until it was like 20 weeks. And that was when the show was done. Yeah, we were done filming yeah. when you told me. I had just found out that I was pregnant when we started filming. Wow. I was thrilled to have Christina come in because most people don't know this, but I've known Christina since I was 16. And my two best friends from back home, Maddie and Danny, when they moved out here, Christina was their, their first roommate in L.A., so she's known me since I was a little babe. Yeah. <laughs> you, you hadn't even moved here. You were coming, like... Yeah, I was just yeah, visiting. Yeah, you were visiting. Yep. You are like, I want to move to L.A. I was like, you should move here. I think you would do well You're here. You're like, this city's going to eat you alive. You should do it. <laughs> you should totally do it. So when I knew that you were coming back, it felt like a little piece of just, like... It felt like a home. But I think a lot of people don't know we have a history. No, they don't, because I've had to interview about it. They're like, people don't know. Can you explain? Because yeah. it doesn't make sense. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. no one knew that. No, I, I have that attachment with Stassi and Katie, and I feel like coming back, they're like, wait, Stassi's not on the show. Why are you coming back on the show? And I'm like, well, I've known Lala forever and Katie. And, and I've, I've known everyone forever. Yeah. I mean, I got Stassi the job at Sir. Like... So crazy. I mean, low key, I could be like, this whole show is because of me. <laughs> <laughs> like, you got the job at Sir because I got the job for all the girls at Sir. Yeah. Oh my God. We should all be giving you like 10%. So, really, when people are like, why is she coming back? I'm like, this wouldn't exist if it wasn't for me. Yeah. So, I love it. I would wear that around like a badge of honor. <laughs> What are you both looking most forward to watching back this season? Me drag Raquel in Havasu. <laughs> Don't cheer for that. Oh, Don't no. encourage her. Oh, God. No. Oh, no, that's your answer? That's that, my answer. Oh, okay. Right? You were there. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> That you was know, the most intense dinner. It went from the most, the board, I was like, this is going to get cut. <laughs> I was like, this whole dinner's getting cut. Are we talking about in Havasu? Yeah. We okay. were like sitting there and it was just like, Charlie came into town. I, was I wasn't like, invited by we the way. We were like, who's that? It was just really <laughs> weird. We were like, this is not, she was, I was like, this is getting cut, the whole thing. And then very quickly, very quickly, everything went to shit. It did. That's going to be a, a crazy episode. That's Vanderpump Rules. Oh, yeah. I can't wait for you guys to watch. Oh, my God. <laughs> but I, I think I look forward, too, to Mexico. Yeah. Um, yeah. I had, I had some really... That was... That was a turning point for us, too. Yeah. Yeah. We had a good conversation. and But I had a good time with Katie. I mean, it, yeah, I would say Mexico was a fun... 
We have yeah. to move on from this because I'm going to start telling them the entire season. I okay. Know. I just really okay. Okay. like so. I'm like dying right now. <laughs> <laughs> I what would spill it all? What would you both I say? I forget. I forget. I feel like we're in our living room chatting. I'm like, I know, oh right? Gosh, I'm like, I'm just like here us. right now. I got blinders on. Yeah, like, <laughs> what would you say as two people who obviously are friends with people I'm not friends with? What would you say is the hardest part navigating friendships when you're in the middle? Because I've been in the middle in this group a lot of times too. But what piece of advice would you have for anyone listening <laughs> who's navigating being in between two people who can't stand each other. That, it, that is very hard. Um, I think with you and obviously Katie, I will never be blindly loyal to anybody. And if what you're saying makes sense to me, like I got your back. If what Katie is saying makes sense to me, then like I'm gonna have her back. And if either of you don't like that, I don't know what to tell you, but I hope you know that I love you. I understand okay. that. She's another story. No, I think, <laughs> I think all is good right now. We'll see when we have to like step into the reunion. Yeah. Then that's when things shift very quickly. Yeah. And I may turn into a little baby chihuahua for the first time. We'll see. I don't know. Well, Lala and I have plans after the reunion to drive to Palm Springs together because she just bought the house next door to me. <laughs> I did. Yes. Yeah, so congratulations. Thank you. On soon to being a homeowner. Christina, you as well. I know you have just Thank bought your you. first house. Yeah. It's so exciting. Like we all have our own businesses. We all own our own homes. Like, I just, can we all just give all of us a round of applause? <laughs> oh my gosh. And to all of you out there who are doing the same thing, it's just, it's so epic to be able to, you know, just support yourself with your dreams and to be able to do fun shit with it, you know? Yeah. 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 That part feels really good. Yeah. Because for a very long time, like I have said it before, I'm not a stranger to the way the outside world views me and what they've seen, I'm well aware of it. And to see that I am out on my own providing for my child, I'm now a homeowner with no one's help, is it feels really good. So I really want to thank all of you for supporting me and my friends. You guys really are amazing and it does not go unnoticed ever. Yeah. Well said. Yay. All right, I got a couple more questions that came from Instagram, and then I want to open it up to everyone here. Who the F knows Emily Rose? <laughs> Wants to know, how do we all adjust? <laughs> that's that's, that's like, the name. I don't know Who <laughs> TF knows Emily Rose? It's a good Instagram <laughs> handle. How do you all readjust to normal life post-filming? I'd need a month in another country, she said. So what are two things that or one thing, you know, that each of you did after we wrapped this season to kind of just decompress and just reground yourself? I mean, that's easy for me to answer. I told everyone I was pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was like, thank God, I'm pregnant. I mean, I was like, could not wait to be able to t tell people. And yeah, yeah, that's what I did. Yeah. Yeah. I got chills when you sent me that text. Oh my God, I was so yeah. excited for you. Cause yeah. like you and I have had, you know, intimate conversations about pregnancy and things. So when I got that text from you, I was- There had been so many times where it almost just like slipped where I was like, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna say it. And yeah, it didn't, but it almost did. Yeah. That one time on the beach. I know, I know. I'm actually really impressed because when I found out I was pregnant, I was like, thank God that we're not filming because I wouldn't care about anything that anyone was talking about. So mm -hmm. the fact that you showed up and you were like ready to give a shit, I guess, still, yeah. even though you had this like really exciting thing happening, I'm impressed. Oh, there was like internal times where there were conversations I was having with certain people and I was like, I... Like, I don't care about this. Yeah, yeah right? Yeah. You're like, I'm growing a human right now. Yeah. This shit is so petty. Yeah. 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 Way bigger things. I think I retreat. I'm an, what is it, introverted or outroverted? In, what is it? Extrovert? 
extroverted introvert, introvert. Yeah. Where like I can, you know, key key with people and do the whole thing and then I need to recharge. So I definitely like turn my phone off. I don't want to see any of you for a really long time. <laughs> and that's what I do. I watch a lot of Real Housewives. I feel like we don't wear makeup for like months. Oh, like, hell we don't no. Do I'm not putting hair. a face on. Because it's a lot of every day like getting glant ready yeah. and like doing your hair, getting an outfit, sometimes multiple outfits. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And having to be ready like that. Like you have no time. In Mexico, yeah. filming was like, you, you would be, they want you to stay out late drinking, call, wake up early in the morning, be ready. You don't have time to shower. They're in your room filming and you're just like, oh, I don't have a second. Mm-hmm. Yeah, especially when they're like, we would love to get footage of you going to bed. I'm like, oh. <laughs> they really <laughs> love those brushing teeth. The teeth, the teeth, the teeth the brushing. Teeth brushing. What what packing yeah. scenes. Who Bravo loves that shit. Yeah. Why? Like, and the walk ups. We I need know. to get you guys walking in. I'm like, I think the audience knows that we probably walked in. They're not going to be like, how did they get in the building? They just appeared. It's so annoying. <laughs> and it takes like an hour. Yeah. I know. It's horrible. I know. So the fact that I can just like walk into a restaurant without someone being like, can we get that again? We would love to get that again. Yeah. <laughs> so I enjoy things like that, going to bed without someone filming me brushing my teeth. Totally. Because then you got the people that are like, she didn't brush very long. And you're like, are you fucking No, no yeah. literally. Yeah. And you're like, I already did this. And I, I totally get it. Yeah. One more baby question for you. What are you most excited and nervous for baby boy coming? Oh, my gosh. Excited. Oh, there's so many things I'm excited for. I'm excited for all the firsts, like his first words, his first I love you. Like you were telling know, me with Summer I and she said, it. I love you so much. And you're like, I cried. I, so yeah. like things like that, his first time like on the beach touching sand, mm-hmm. his first time riding a bike and just experiencing all of these things in a new way through his eyes. Yeah. You know, like almost becoming a kid again yeah. is really exciting. Like watching Lion King for the first time. <laughs> Wait, have you never seen it for real? No, with him. Oh, okay. like, oh watch- my God. Yeah, he's not going to be like Ty, you. who's never like, seen flags, Lion King. Red flags everywhere again. PTSD. <laughs> <laughs> but I'd have to say all of those, like first. Yeah. I'm really excited for that. They're the best. Um, and then I'm most anxious for your vagina being torn apart. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Never well. being the same. It goes back, and if you're like Lala, it might be even cuter it's after. Cuter. <laughs> um, gosh, I'm also anxious for all of those first things. I feel like yeah. I'm really anxious for all of like the unknown. Um, I feel like, gosh, my. I, what did you say sort of something like where it's like you feel like you once you have a child you just your heart's like ripped out and like yep. given to that child and then you worry for basically the rest, for the rest of, of your life. life so that's sort of like yeah i have yeah. that to, i have that no, it's terrifying but mm-hmm. i think all of that obviously it weighs outweighs all of the good out you know definitely yeah I'm so excited for you. I, I can't wait. Oh my I God. Play I'm convinced she's not pregnant. Doesn't it look like <laughs> just a ball? Ba- yeah. That's a basketball. <laughs> so I was telling Ocean, I was like, there's a baby in there. And she goes to lift up. <laughs> Where? She looked under my dress. And I just kind of like let her. She's like, and Lala's like, well, okay, not yet. I'm like, how did she know yeah. that that's. Because I told her. She's smart. Yeah, she's yeah. smart. She's baby so genius. smart. Dude, we have really smart kids, and they just learn from each other. It's I can't wait for. Well, now I'm best. like, can you guys like have another? Because that would we. I need you guys. This no. Year to <laughs> no. I was like, I was like ready to go, and then when Ocean started looking me dead in my eyes with the "go fuck yourself" stare, I was like, oh, we're gonna <laughs> wait. Like she's she's a savage, dude. I'm like, she's I, you. She's a mini you. Oh no. <laughs> I mean, like, being me is great, but to deal with me sounds like torture, you know? I don't know that I want that. Last question, and then we're going to open it up to the audience. Mama underscore Gab wants to know, when did your opinion of Brock change, and what changed it? I think, obviously, my, my situation made me realize that life is not black and white and things in life happen that you sometimes go, I wish this didn't happen, but there's nothing you can do to change it. And I did take a step back to, you know, 
understand that because I certainly, even though maybe I, I didn't feel like I was projecting, but maybe subconsciously I knew that something was going on with my own relationship. I don't know. But I think the biggest thing was like, your forgiveness and Brock's forgiveness and being able to like really put things aside and start new and just to see him. Someone make her laugh quick. <laughs> um, just to see the way he is with you is like, amazing and to see the way he is with summer is incredible but the way that he is with ocean is just like oh my gosh i'm so grateful because my kid is not gonna have that i at this point in time cannot provide that for her so the fact that i have brock for my child is just like the biggest blessing and I know that his past is obviously not something he ever wanted to have happen. And I just feel terrible that I ever felt that it was like my right to judge him. Sorry, damn. No, it's okay. Um, no, that dude will forever, like I co-sign on him a million times over. There's nothing anyone can say about, about Brock. Like, I will come for you. No. I will come for you. <laughs> no, we just, we love you so much christina i love you so much i love how far i've come with both of you with our friendships because it's been rocky as you guys have watched for years and this season i'm just excited for everyone to see lala and i's friendship blossom even more and to see the conversation that Christina and I had in Mexico where now it's just like, I just consider you such a good friend and I'm so excited for you with this baby and I can't wait for all of our babies to grow up together. I can't wait for the same thing, sheesh. <laughs> all right, do you guys have some questions? Where should we start? Hi, my name is Angela. Hi, Angela. Hi, Sheena. Um, Sheena and Lala, it has been so great to see your motherhood journey, and I love watching Ocean and Summer within your Instagrams and just seeing them grow up together and you be like thriving as moms. Um, Christine and I am so excited for you to Thank embark you. on that journey soon enough. Thank you. Um, so for Sheena and Lala, I would like to know like what has been your favorite part of motherhood, and then for the both of you, what kind of advice do you have for Christina as she embarks upon that journey? Ooh, my like advice would be to just trust your gut. Just listen to that mom instinct because you're going to know what's best for your baby. You could read every book. You could get all of the advice. But at the end of the day, your decisions that you make for this baby are going to be the right ones. And just trust your gut. Like, that's my best piece of I advice. That. I think watching her learn and just figure out life and the world is so fun every day she says something new she learns something new and I just like literally this week she started saying I love you mommy or she'll say I love mommy and then she'll go and daddy <laughs> and then she adds and opa and nani and it's just everything about her is my favorite but just seeing her learn new things is so fun that is fun right yeah um, my advice for you, Christina, is to not take everyone's advice. <laughs> <laughs> I think you should only take advice from moms who you see where it resonates with you, their style yeah. of parenting, um, because everyone's going to try and tell you what to do, but you're going to know. The yeah. second that kid comes out of you, you're, you just tap into something where it's like you just, you don't even remember what it was like to not be a mom. Um, and I think my most favorite part is, yeah, just watching, like you said, you're excited to see the world through their eyes. That's what it is. I mean, every single day my kid is teaching me something new and I just watch her and go like, wow, you, you just have so much to, to offer this world. And you're, you know, she's such a force. She's really living up to her name already. So just to see her, like, making waves already, I'm like, 
you go, girl. Like this, this yeah. world is yours for the taking. And watching them learn together off each other, like Summer will say something, then Ocean will say it. Ocean will do something, then Summer will do it. And just watching them together is one of my favorite things, honestly. Yeah, no, it's so cute. Ocean's new thing is I feel claustrophobic when I go to the bathroom, so I like rarely close the door. <laughs> I know that's so gross. I never close the door. But she'll come up and say, close the door. <laughs> that's so Dude, cute. They're so cute and fun. Yeah. <laughs> so there are a lot of things to love about filming a show, but if you had to each pick one thing that you hate about filming Vanderpump Rules, what would it be? <sighs> I hate when... You know someone you're not getting along with is going to be there and you have to have a conversation with them. Like, I hate the feeling I get because I don't like confrontation. It makes my blood pressure raise, my heart beats quick, and I just, I hate that feeling. So I think that's my biggest thing is when you know you're going into a situation where you have to have that awkward conversation that you don't want to have, but you have to because it's your job. I love all of it. All of it. I thrive. Oh, I thrive. If I know I'm right and I'm going into an argument, I'm like, fuck this. I know I'm right. But if it's like a, oh, I don't know what she's going to say. And then what am I? It just, oh, I, I don't know. I feel really? like I used to be a lot better at it, and now I don't know you if it's soft. Yeah, I turned soft. The kid yeah. turned me soft. I cry <laughs> every single day, and it, I think it went from baby blues to happy tears to my OCD and fears turning into tears. And it's just like every day there is something that makes me cry. I could watch a commercial and there's something sweet in it that makes me cry. So I've definitely turned soft the last couple of seasons, but I felt like this season I kind of got that spark back and I stand my ground a little more, Yeah, which I'm proud of myself for doing. We all are proud of you, boo. Thanks. <laughs> Uh, first of all, congratulations to all three of you ladies for being super successful and having a personality that's very relatable to everyone. That's an extra blessing. Um, my question is, because of the success of the show and how you've been able to build businesses and your following, do you feel that it's um, more difficult having your personality attached to your business? Or do you feel that it helps in a sense that because, because you guys are successful and influencing your own brand, do you feel the need to also use influencer marketing to reach like other businesses? Or do you feel like relying on yourselves is enough to grow your brand? For me, I felt like with Viva Verano, I wanted to do something that had a personal touch but didn't scream Sheena because I know people have their opinions about me and I knew that this was a product that is so fucking good. Like literally the strip lashes are the best I've ever worn because I wouldn't put out anything less than, you know? So it's a thin strip, it's got the fluffy lashes, I love everything about them, but I didn't want it to be like, I mean, we have Lala, you know, give them Lala, but she is her own brand and people love that. With me, I feel like people don't love me like that, so I was like, I wanna do something that's me, but you don't know it's me if you see it in a store. It's pretty packaging, it has the summer moon honey. Viva Verano, for those who don't know, means long live summer. So it's a personal touch, but it doesn't scream Sheena. I felt like that was important for me creating this brand. I'm, I want my brand to scream me. So I'm like, I want someone to look at that and like, that's so Christina Kelly. Yeah, totally. Like, yeah, that's, that's the beach and that's natural and that's that. So I try to like push that. I don't at all. <laughs> <laughs> um, and as far as like relying on other influencers, um, Luckily, up until this point, I've been able to only rely on myself, but obviously as we grow, um, we're going to have to make changes and I'm okay with that. You know, every brand is going to hit a point where you feel like you've plateaued and you got to switch it up. But um, no, I don't ever get concerned about people knowing that it's mine. I've never even thought about that. I just figured well, Yours like, is literally it, named after. I yeah. know, but I didn't ever go like, but what if people like don't fuck with me like that? Like, are they going to be turned off? Like I, that didn't even go through my mind. I want to do something with you. That's like a callback of the universe. We got to change your mindset. Yeah. 
I agree. Yeah. One hundred percent. If anything, I think I need to put my face and me on my brand more. I agree. Like where it's like because <laughs> yeah, I mean, like I need to give I need to give them Christina <laughs> like a little bit more. I agree. Well, see, I feel like this kind of goes back to me saying just with this brand. I don't know. I just I kind of wanted it to just be something because I've tried so many things with my face all over it that haven't been the most successful thing in the world that I wanted to try something different. Like you say, you know, if something doesn't work, pivot and try something different. So I'm like, well, maybe if I don't say, you know, these are Sheena Shea lashes and it's just Viva Verano and one day you see them in Sephora, which is a goal of mine or Ulta or any of those stores, but you just see really pretty packaging right. and it doesn't turn you off because it's Sheena Shea's. Okay. Because, you know, so I, I felt that. like that's what I took a little bit of your advice okay. there. However, I do still need to work on the other side of it and building up that confidence and changing That's my what mindset. I mean. But with this, I was like, let's try something different that doesn't scream Sheena and maybe more people will buy it. Okay. I love that. As long as you're thinking more of from like a business standpoint and don't take it like not a personal standpoint. Yeah. Because I always say you can't take it personally. Totally. Yeah. That was a really good question. That was yeah, a great was. question. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Two more. I just wanted to, because uh, my friend is not here, she has a migraine, I want to publicly acknowledge and thank you, Sheena, for so graciously actually going out of your way to have us written down to be able to come back. Uh, she was playing, trying to undertone it, but she's like an obsessed with you. Aww. Really. Um, she loves you to death. And thank you. Lala, I don't know if she, for, I don't think she really probably got as deep as she was, but you were her inspiration for getting sober. So I just mm -hmm. want to thank you for that. Like it was cause she was a totally different person. So oh, that makes me it really was, happy. It was really you and watching your journey as what changed her. So thank well, you. she's inspiring me. So please tell her that. Yeah. Thank you. And thank you for coming again. Love to see you. Okay. Hello. Hello. So, um, I guess I'm the last question. All right. So I wanted to ask all three of you ladies um, about your creative blocks. When you guys had creative blocks, how long you stayed there and what did you do? Like, what was your turning point to get out of that creative block? I That's feel, such a great question. Yeah, that was. I feel like for me, it was just switching what I was doing. You know, it's like, okay, maybe the merch or whatever isn't taking off the way you thought it was. So what are you good at, Sheena? What are you good at doing? Fucking eyelashes. I could do my eyelashes in a compact mirror with my nails. I, my friends, everyone knows I can put them on you in two seconds. I can put them on me. And this is something that I've always wanted to do, but never did. So it's like, why am I not doing something that I'm good at? Why am I not putting out a product that I love, that I use every day? So I felt like my creative block was just not putting out the right product and not doing something I was passionate about that I loved and I love eyelashes. And these eyelashes, for those of you who haven't tried them yet, they literally are the best. So I think I just needed to pivot and do something I love doing that I am passionate about. Go for it, boo. Yeah, I've, I felt like well, I've been doing this since 2016, so I feel like when you're doing some, the same kind of thing for so long, it starts to like, yeah, how can I refresh? Like, what can I do? What, what's a new product that I can add to the brand? I feel like I travel or I just take a break and I go somewhere new or experience something new. And that's when I added the bar soaps in. I think I went to like Europe or something and I was feeling like, man, like, yeah, everything's feeling really stale. What can I do? What's a new product? And the bar soaps came. I, I probably was in some shop and I was like, oh, look at these handmade soaps. And I got really inspired and came back and like fueled, ready to go. Yeah. The soaps are bomb, by the way. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, <laughs> They're Thanks, so La. good. Thanks. Um, my creative block is usually me getting out of my own way. I always, my face always looks the same. I don't venture out very often. It's like, I'm, I, I like to live, I know it doesn't seem this way, but I like a safe zone. And for me, 
I think surrounding yourself with people who kind of take you out of your creative rut, you know, because if I had it my way, I'd be in like a mauve lip every day and definitely would not have blue eyeshadow on right now, <laughs> nor would I create an entire palette full of color. Like it just, the whole thing freaks me out. I think you should definitely keep a notepad next to your bed because I have realized that great ideas come to you when you're dead asleep. And I'm telling you what, if you do not write that shit down, you do not remember in the morning because there's so many times where I'm like, damn it, I had a brilliant idea last night. And I, there we go. See, you have to have that. And, you know, I think talking, like if you have friends, talk to them because a lot of great ideas have come from my friends. The Give Them Lala baby shirt with the binky in the mouth I was like, it sounds so simple, but like I wanted to stay true to give them Lala and I wanted it to be across the board. I, Bethany Frankel taught me that, like make sure everything is cohesive. The binky in the mouth, dude, fucking brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually so true. That's true for me too. The tinted lip balm, Stassi was like, can you please just, could, that was her idea. The lavender face spray was Katie's idea. Yeah, and sometimes you don't need some like crazy idea to switch it up, yeah. right? Like creating a, a shirt with a face that's been on every single thing I've ever worn and shoving a binky in its mouth is like not <laughs> that like riveting, <laughs> but it okay. hit. Yeah. Did we help you at all? <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you guys all so much for coming. We're going to be taking photos in the back. You guys can still shop all of our stuff. And if you have any friends who still want to come by tomorrow, yeah, we will tomorrow. be here 11 to 5. And I think it's not going to rain tomorrow. Yeah. So. There's really good restaurants around here, guys. I don't make my way downtown, but, like, this place is, like, pretty poppin'. These two restaurants, the pizza joint, I'll tell you what. Also, fun fact, Raquel and I filmed at The Row this season, you so you'll Have see fun. a little more of this place on the show. <laughs> we all can't wait to fast forward through that part. <laughs> hey. I'm in the scene too, bitch. I'm just kidding. I'm totally kidding. You See, hate when I fast forward You guys yours. can't laugh at what I say because I'll keep going. Because you're giving me fuel. She would use that again tomorrow if we were doing another Yeah, movie. right? Okay, noted. Where's the notepad? <laughs> all right. Well, thank you guys all for coming. Thank you guys all for listening. You can shop all of our brands online. We've got Give Them Lala, Heart Spring, Viva Verano Lashes. And we'll be back getting into some more shenanigans Thanks next week. Thanks for having us, Sheena. Thank Thanks, you. guys.